Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. All right, a lot of you have been asking how to simulate the light riding effect that has been seen on those sprint commercials. They actually use real lights in filming that, but it can be done with After Effects to some degree. And there are actually a few different ways to do this that I can think of, but I'm going to present one way, and hopefully you can take what I've done here and make it your own. This is going to be an advanced tutorial, meaning that you need to know some things before you get started on this. But I won't leave you hanging. If you aren't familiar with null objects, nesting and precomposing, fractal noise, displacement mapping, or expression controls, you're going to need to watch my tutorials covering those subjects first. And you can find those tutorials at creativecow.net in the same place that you found this one. Okay, that said, let's get into it. Here I am in After Effects with a blank composition called Displacement that is 5 seconds long. I'm going to add a new solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid. The color doesn't matter, but make sure it's the same size as the composition. Then click OK to confirm the creation of a new solid. Then, with the new solid selected, I'll choose Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. In the Effects panel, I'll make the following changes to the Fractal Noise effect. I'll set the Fractal type to Cloudy, which creates this cloudy look. Then, I'll set the Complexity down to 2. Also, at the first frame in the timeline, I'll set a keyframe for the evolution property with the value of 0. Then, I'll move down to the last frame in the timeline, that's our 5 second mark, and I'll set it to 10. A quick preview and we can see that I have this animated fractal. Okay, we're done with this fractal for now, but we'll be coming back to it a little later. Jumping into my main composition, I have a picture here that I took in Scotland. Yeah, I was uh, there recently exploring my Scottish roots. I am Aaron Robinowitz of the Clan McRobinowitz. Yeah, I, I can't back that up at all. Moving on. Anyway. We're going to create our light writing effect and composite it in this scene. Take note, by the way, that this composition's frame rate is 10 frames per second, not 30. I need the motion to be stepped here. Let's add a new solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid. And again, the color doesn't matter, but you do want it to match the composition size. Also, I'll name the solid Logo. Then. I'll click OK to confirm the creation of the solid. Next, with the logo layer selected, I'll use the mask tool to create a star shape. Just double clicking on the star mask tool will add it in. Then, I'll double click on one of the mask points to transform it. And I'll scale it down and position it in the center of the screen. By the way, it's very important that you use the mask tool with the layer already selected because in After Effects CS3, we have a new feature called Shape Layers, which, if no layer is selected, will create a new layer instead of a mask. Okay, with that done, I'll create a new mask with the Rounded Rectangle Mask tool. But this time, instead of double-clicking, I'll drag the mask out. That's right, you can add a mask by either double-clicking on the tool or by drag-clicking. By the way, if you're using After Effects 7, you may be feeling a little lost here, because After Effects 7 doesn't have these special shapes available for the masking tools. But they are available as animation presets in the Shapes folder, so you can just add them directly to a solid and go from there. In fact, if you want to draw your own shapes with the pen tool, you can do that too. You don't even have to have a closed path for this effect to work. Or you can say, forget masking in After Effects altogether, and copy shapes that you made in Adobe Illustrator and paste them onto your solid here in After Effects, as I've covered in a previous tutorial. Anyway, once this is set up, select your logo layer in the timeline and hit M to reveal the mask modes, and then set each of the mask modes to none. Next, let's add the stroke effect to our logo layer by selecting the layer and choosing Effect, Generate, Stroke. I've used this effect in previous tutorials, and as you know, it creates a stroke on the masks if set properly. With the logo layer selected, go into the Effects panel, and in the Stroke Effect settings, set it to Stroke All Masks instead of just one. Using the Color Picker, set the color to a pale green. 
Then set the brush size to 4, which may seem large to you, but then set the brush hardness to 0, which makes it look a bit smaller. By the way, you may find that you want to use bigger strokes than I'll be using here. That's up to you. Don't let me tell you what looks good. Finally, set the paint style to transparent, which makes the solid layer's color disappear while still preserving the strokes. Okay, this next step is going to involve expressions and expression controls. So, let's add a new null object by choosing layer new null object. Then, with the null selected, I'll hit enter on my keyboard to rename it and I'll call it controller. Then, with the null still selected, I'll choose effect expression controls slider control. I'm going to use this control to animate the stroke over time. To do that, in the timeline, select the controller null and hit E to reveal all effects. Then, twirl down the slider control effect to reveal the slider property. Then, select the logo layer and hit E to reveal all effects and twirl down the stroke effect. Find the end property and alt-click on its keyframe stopwatch to begin writing an expression. By the way, if you're on a Macintosh, then you'd option-click on the stopwatch. Then, take the pick whip and drag it to the controller null's slider. What we've just done here is link the stroke's endpoint to the slider. The stroke's start and endpoint determine where on the mask the stroke will appear. By default, start is set to 0%, meaning at the beginning of the mask, and end is set to 100%, meaning at the end of the mask. As a result, you get a stroke that covers the full mask. But now we've set the endpoint to match the slider's value, which is currently 0. So that means that the start and endpoint are both on 0%, meaning that no stroke is seen. But hang in there. At the first frame of our timeline, set a keyframe for the slider with a value of zero. And then move down to about one and a half seconds, that's frame 105, because this is a 10 frame per second composition, and set another keyframe with a value of 100. As you can see, when I move along in the timeline, the stroke will animate on over one and a half seconds. However, each mask is animating on separately. I'd like them to animate on at the same time. So with the logo layer selected, I'll go into the effects panel and uncheck stroke sequentially. Now as I move through time, I can see that they animate on together. You know, but maybe it's a little too together. While I want them to animate on at the same time, I want them to come from different directions. The fastest way to do this is to double click on the rounded rectangle and rotate the mask shape 180 degrees. There are other advanced solutions, but I'm not going to cover them here. Anyway, once that's done, scrubbing through the timeline reveals that the strokes are now animating on from different positions. Next, in the timeline, set the logo layer's blending mode to add. This gives the colors of the stroke an additive effect when it interacts with the layers below it. Alright, now let's add a displacement map. In the project panel, drop the displacement precomposition into our main composition. And once it's there, turn off its eyeball switch so that we can't see it. Then, with the logo layer selected, choose Effect Distort Displacement Map. Then, go into the Effects panel and set the displacement map layer to our displacement precomp layer. A quick RAM preview and we can see that our stroke is now looking a bit distorted and wiggly. Okay, let's duplicate the logo layer by selecting it and hitting Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh and then select the bottom of the two duplicates and hit Enter to rename it to Logo Glow. Once that's done, with the Logo Glow layer selected, go into the Effects panel and set the stroke color from pale green to an intense green. Yeah, you know that acid green that they use so much in the matrix? Oh yeah. Then, with the logo glow layer selected, let's add a blur to it by choosing Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then, in the Effects panel, 
set the blurriness property up to 6. This creates a nice outer glow of green with a more intense light green in the center, kind of like a lightsaber or a phaser blast. Oh, that's right, my sci-fi loving friends. I am one of you. Okay, in the timeline, let's select the logo and logo glow layers and then hit Control D to duplicate them. Then drag them down in the stack order to sit below the originals. All right, next, let's make all of our logo layers a child of our controller null. Select all of those layers and then in the parent column, grab any one of their pick whips and drag it to the controller null. Now, any transformations that we make to the controller null will happen to all of our logo layers as well. Next, let's wiggle our null layers position. With the null layer selected, hit P to reveal the position property. Then, Alt-click on the position properties stopwatch to add an expression and type wiggle open parentheses 30 comma 7 close parentheses which makes the null wiggle its position a lot. If we turn on motion blur for all of our logo layers and for the composition as well, when we do a RAM preview, we can see some nice motion blur being applied to the effect. Okay, I want to use this animation in two places on the screen at once, and the best way to do that is to pre-compose all of our logo layers and anything else connected to them. So, I'll select the displacement map, the null object, and all of my logo layers and with those selected I'll choose layer precompose. I don't need to open the precomposition for now so I'll just make sure that open new composition is not selected. Also I'll name the composition logo then I'll hit OK to create the new composition. As you can see all of my layers have been moved out of this composition and only a single layer is left in its place. Then, I'll select the logo layer, and in the timeline, I'll set its transfer mode to add. Then, I'll make the logo layer a 3D layer by turning on its 3D layer switch. Once that's done, I'll duplicate the logo layer by hitting Ctrl D, and then I'll select the bottom of the two layers, and I'll hit Enter to rename it to Logo Floor. Once it's been renamed, I'll use the rotation tool to rotate the layer in 3D space and I'll also position it in 3D space as well. Ultimately, I'm trying to make this layer look like it's lying on the floor. This might take a little eyeballing. Next, with the logo floor layer selected, I'll add a blur by choosing Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then, in the Effects panel, set the blurriness property up to 40. Okay, last few steps here. With the logo floor layer selected, choose Effect, Distort, Bezier Warp. The Bezier Warp tool allows you to warp the shape with different warp handles. So, grab hold of the layer's bottom corner handles, although in this case it's actually the top because we've rotated the layer in 3D space, and drag them closer to the center. Then, Grab hold of the center handles at the top of the layer, which in our case is actually the bottom part of the screen, and drag them out. As you can see, it creates a sort of distance effect so that the logo's light cast is smaller closer to the logo and larger as it gets further away. Okay, one last thing. As light moves away from a light source, it dims. So, select the logo floor layer and then choose Effect Transition, Linear Wipe. In the Effects panel, set the transition completion to 30, the wipe angle to 180, and the feather to 250. You'll probably need to play with these values for whatever project you're working on. At this point, you may want to adjust the positioning of your logo layer relative to the floor layer and possibly even move it back in 3D space a bit, but that's up to you. Obviously the effect we're trying to get here is that our logo is casting light onto the floor, but you need to know where you want to position that in space. Okay, a quick RAM preview and we've got some light writing, but it's not perfect, or rather it's perhaps a little too perfect. I would love to be able to add some random flashes of light 
And also, it would be great if, as it's being drawn onto the screen, there was a hot spot at the head of each stroke. Well, for that, we're going to need to do a little more work with some expressions. And since this tutorial has gone on for a lot longer than I expected it to, we'll have to cover that in another podcast. For now, I think you've got some good stuff to work with here. Oh, hey, if you like this tutorial and you want to show some love, don't forget to check out all of my Creative Cow Master Series training DVDs, including my most recent one, Internet Killed the Video Star, a guide to creating video for the web, which you can find at training.creativecow.net. Obviously, that's not an After Effects DVD, but I think it's essential training for any video artist who wants to put their work up on the web. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.